Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay and Luster Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous, caressable hair bring you Our Miss Brooks starring Eve Arden. It's time once again for another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks under the direction of Al Lewis. Well, it usually takes a few days, but Saturday inevitably arrives, and when it does, our Miss Brooks, who teaches English at Madison High School, gets a chance to sleep late. Yesterday, she didn't join her landlady in the breakfast nook until 10 o'clock. Oh, good morning, Mrs. Davis. Good morning, Connie. How did you sleep last night? Not too well. I have a little cold, and that cat of ours bounced into my room just as I was dozing off. Minerva. But she was only playing with her ball, Connie. I don't mind her playing ball, but I can't handle these night games that go into extra innings. <laughs> Believe me, the next time Minerva keeps me up oh, until not three... not so loud, Connie. She'll hear you. And you know how sensitive she is. <laughs> See, she heard us mentioning her name. Please, Mrs. Davis, I know Minerva's bright, but you're attributing an intelligence to her that she doesn't actually possess. Oh, but she does. I'm sure she recognizes her name. Oh, that's ridiculous. Listen, Minerva. Hi, Minerva. <laughs> there you are. Wait. Here, Charlie. Nice Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> How are things, Bessie? What's new, Max? <laughs> See? Minerva doesn't even know whether she's a boy or a girl. Why should she? She's only two years old. There are... <laughs> there are certain things I'd just as soon keep from her until she's older. <laughs> Me too. And let's start with my nylons. <laughs> Thank goodness I've got this one pair left for my date with Mr. Boynton this afternoon Oh, do you have a date with Mr. Boynton today? No, but I'm going to suggest it as soon as he can get away from Sherry's department store Sherry's? Yes, he's pinch hitting for a salesman friend of his who has a dental appointment But Connie, are teachers permitted to do anything but teach? Oh, of course, Mrs. Davis Especially if there's no money in it. <laughs> now, I'd better get started if I'm going to go downtown. But, Connie, I have to go to a ladies' aid meeting today, and if we're both out of the house, she'll be all alone. Who'll be all alone? You know. M-I-N-E-R-V-A. <laughs> oh, great. Now she can spell. <laughs> only be gone for a few hours. I'm sure she'll be perfectly all right. No, Connie. She hasn't been herself lately, and I just wouldn't feel right if I left her alone. Say, I know what we could do. Harriet Conklin has always been very fond of Minerva. If you could drop her off at their place on your way down to Sherry's... All right, Mrs. Davis. I'll drop Minerva off for you. I wonder who that can be. I know a surefire way to find out. Come in! Hi, Mrs. Davis, and to you, fair flower of the faculty, a thousand salams. Thank you, Walter Denton, and I've had my share, thanks. <laughs> but to what do we owe the honor of this visit? Oh, I just happened to be driving by when the thought occurred to me that maybe I could give you a lift someplace. After I help you finish breakfast, that is. Well, now that you mention it, you can. I'm going down to Sherry's to pick up Mr. Boynton. Oh, uh, just a minute, Connie. I was about to suggest that you borrow my car for the day. Then you could take Mr. Boynton for a nice ride in the country. Yeah, way out in the country. <laughs> but, Mrs. Davis, what about you? The ladies' aid meeting isn't very far, Connie. Walter can drop me there, and I can always get a ride home. Mrs. Davis, you've made yourself a deal, and thanks very much. Not at all, dear. The keys are on the table in the hall right next to your hat and coat. I'm on my way. Will you excuse me, Walter? You go with my blessing, O fairest of the fair. May 10,000 suns shine upon this meeting with your beloved. Thank you, Ahmed. <laughs> on my way out, I'll give your camel a lump of sugar. <laughs> oh, uh, Connie, aren't you forgetting something? You said you'd drop off uh, you-know-who at the Conklin's. Oh, sorry, Mrs. Davis. Come on, you-know-who. Ah. Uh. 
<laughs> Isn't that cute? She won't budge and let you call her by name. I know. Let's go, Clyde. I don't like to hurry you, Walter, but if you'll finish your milk now, I'm rather anxious to get to the meeting. This being the first of the month, it's rather an important one. Say, you're right. Today is April 1st. April Fool's Day. Gosh, I better get busy. I haven't even thought up a way to plague our beloved principal. You better leave Mr. Conklin alone, Walter. Oh, not a chance. Let's see now. He's crazy about television, but so far he's been too tight to spring for a set. Oh, wait. It's coming. It's coming. A real wild goose chase. Oh. Finish your milk, dear. As soon as I get my hat and primp up a bit, I'll be ready to go. Oh, take your time, Mrs. Davis. I got a phone call to make anyway. Here we are. First, I'll tie this handkerchief around the mouthpiece. Yeah, there. Osgood Conklin speaking. Be brief, please. <laughs> hello, 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 Mr. Conklin. This is the Lucky Gold Mine program calling. Wallace Bacon, your spendthrift quiz master on this end. Bacon? I don't know any Wallace Bacon. I don't believe in wasting my time in talking on the phone to people who obviously don't know... The Lucky Gold Mine Program? <laughs> if you answer one question correctly, Mr. Conklin, we will present to you a fabulous television set. A television set? Oh, thank you, thank you. An admiral television set with a crystal clear 16-inch screen. Good, good, good. <laughs> However, Mr. Conklin, since today is Saturday and there are no deliveries, you'll have to go down to Sherry's department store and pick it up. I'll go, I'll go. <laughs> What is the question, sir? Here it is, ready. In the popular song, Call of the Wild Goose, can you give me the words of the first line whose melody goes... <laughs> Do you know those words, Mr. Conklin? I must go where the wild goose goes. You certainly will. <laughs> that is, congratulations, Mr. Conklin. The television set is yours. I should never have let your mother take the car to that ladies' aid meeting, Harriet. Now I'm stranded. A beautiful television set waiting for me at Cherry's, and I'm unable to pick it up. What's your hurry, Daddy? You can pick it up later. But there's a program on today that I'm particularly interested in. Maybe someone else could pick it up for me. I wonder who I could get. Oh, I, I, I'll get it. I'll get it. Hello, Mr. Conklin. Well, if it isn't Miss Brooks, come in, my dear. Uh, but leave your coat on. I just dropped by to leave our cat <laughs> with Harriet for the afternoon. Hi, Miss Brooks. Oh, you brought Minerva. Meow. <laughs> well, uh, take the beast into the kitchen, Harriet. Miss Brooks and I have something to talk over. Yes, Daddy. Come on, Minerva. I'll give you a nice bowl of milk. Meow. Meow. <laughs> Miss Brooks. <laughs> I will come right to the point. Have you any means of transportation? Yes, sir. Mrs. Davis loaned me her car. Did she now? <laughs> yes, sir. As a matter of fact, I just stopped by here on my way to Sherry's department store. You are so right. Hmm? Miss <laughs> Brooks, you are now looking at the fortunate winner of a quiz contest. At this very moment, a brand new television set is waiting for me at Sherry's department store. My. And who do you think is going to pick it up for me? Uh, Western Union? No. The Wells Fargo people? <laughs> no. No, the person I had in mind is the one member of my faculty whom I most admire, respect, and cherish. Oh, you're going yourself? <laughs> no. No, my car isn't home. Moreover, I must wait here for a call from Mr. Stone. The president of our board of education wants to consult me about his speech. Speech? Yes, he's addressing the convicts at the dedication of the new library at the county jail. It's being uh, televised this afternoon, Miss Brooks, and I'm most eager to have my set promptly installed. Oh, but Mr. Conklin, I'm meeting someone at Cherry's... That is why I, I was delighted when you so graciously volunteered to pick it up for me. I volunteered? Well, forgive me, Mr. Conklin, but I didn't hear a word I said. <laughs> oh? Well, you said, and I quote, 
I'll be most happy to pick it up for you, Mr. Conklin. But, sir, and I... And as you spoke, you looked squarely into the eyes of your beloved principal, that self-same principal with whom you come in daily contact and whose pleasure or displeasure determines whether your life in the hallowed halls of Madison High shall be bearable or unbearable. I repeat, I'll be most happy to pick it up for you, Mr. Conklin. <laughs> Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden, will continue in just a moment. But first, here is Vern Smith. No other dentifrice offers proof of such results. Proof that Colgate Dental Cream helps stop tooth decay before it starts. Two years' research at leading universities using Colgate Dental Cream, hundreds of case histories, makes this the most conclusive proof in all dentifrice history on tooth decay. Conclusive proof that when teeth are brushed with Colgate's right after eating, Colgate Dental Cream helps stop tooth decay before it starts. Yes, the toothpaste you use to clean your breath while you clean your teeth now offers a safe, proved way to reduce tooth decay. Modern science shows decay is caused by mouth acids, which are at their worst right after eating. Brushing teeth with Colgate's, as directed, helps remove acids before they harm enamel. Colgate Dental Cream has been proved to contain all the necessary ingredients, including an exclusive patented ingredient for effective daily dental care. Get Colgate Dental Cream today. Big economy size, only 59 cents. Always use Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay before it starts. Remember, no other dentifrice offers proof of such results. As soon as I left Mr. Conklin, I drove down to Sherry's department store to find out about his prize. But when I entered the radio and television department, I saw Mr. Boynton standing by a cash register. Immediately, I forgot about Mr. Conklin's prize and concentrated on mine. <laughs> As I approached him, Mr. Boynton seemed quite preoccupied. Well, yes, madam. Is there something I can do for you? Plenty, but not in front of all these people. <laughs> Miss Brooks, forgive me for not recognizing you. This sort of work is a little out of my line, but what are you doing here? Just shopping. But if you're only filling in for your friend for half a day, you will be free all afternoon, won't you? Oh, yes, I will. I've just got a little errand to attend to, and then I'll be free, too. Oh, really? What are you going to do? Oh, I don't know. I thought I might run down to the poultry market and watch them pluck chickens. <laughs> Actually, Mr. Boynton, I've borrowed Mrs. Davis's car for the day, and I thought maybe we could take a ride out in the country together. Oh, fine. And while we're waiting, I'll show you around. There are some wonderful new television sets in. Oh, I'm glad you reminded me. Mr. Conklin asked me to pick up his set and bring it home to him. Oh, oh now don't tell me he finally broke down and bought one. No, he won it in a radio quiz. They called him this morning, he said. Oh, what a break for him. Where's the set supposed to be? Right here. Haven't you been notified about it? Not yet. Maybe there's a memo on my desk. I'll look as soon as I put these tubes up on that shelf over there. Oh, I'll put the tubes away for you. we better find out about Mr. Conklin's set right away. All right, Miss Brooks. Uh, have you got something to carry the tubes in? There are quite a few of them. I'll just put them in my bag. Now you run along. Well, the desk is just three aisles down. If any customers come by, just tell them I'll be back in a minute. I will, Mr. Boynton. Six carpet sweepers, two Thor glad irons... Four vacuum cleaners. Oh, excuse me, Mr. Hurley. <laughs> You're checking the merchandise again? As a good store detective, can't be too careful. It's almost automatic with me by now. <laughs> I'm practically a walking inventory. Well, uh, there's nothing missing from my department. See you later, Mr. Hurley. I've got to look for something. Okay. Eight portable radios. Nine record players. Now, if I could just get these two more tubes in this bag, I could save myself a trip. <laughs> too bad that bag isn't larger. Maybe you could get a piano in there. <laughs> Oh, yes. These big bags do come in handy sometimes, don't they? Yes, I'm sure they do. Perhaps I'd better introduce myself. I'm R.J. Hurley, the store detective here. What are you doing with those tubes, young woman? These? Why, I'm just going to put them away on that shelf. Uh, hi, Miss Brooks. Oh, oh, hello, Hurley. Hello, Boynton. Do you know this woman? Oh, certainly. She's Miss Brooks. I'm glad to hear it. Sorry I thought what I thought. But suspicion is my business, you might say. Well, good day, folks. Three table lamps, six floor lamps, 
<laughs> oh, he's quite a character. Well, look here, Miss Brooks. I found this note on my desk addressed to Mr. Conklin. Let's see. Yeah. It says, Congratulations, Mr. Conklin, but the special set you have won will have to be picked up at Sherry's downtown warehouse. Continued good luck, signed Wallace Bacon, Quizmaster. The warehouse? That's quite a ways from here, Miss Brooks. You couldn't handle the set by yourself. Well, I promised Mr. Conklin I'd get it for him, no, though. No, wait a minute. One of the kids from school is working in the stock room on this floor, Stretch Snodgrass. Oh, the brain. <laughs> I'll get him to keep an eye on the department until my friend gets back, and I'll go along and help you deliver Mr. Conklin's television set. Great, Mr. Boynton. And as soon as we've done that, we can have the rest of the day to ourselves. Right. Now let's walk over to the stock room and get Stretch. Are you ready, Miss Brooks? Mr. Boynton, I was born ready. <laughs> funny, the warehouse seems deserted, and the door is locked. Well, let's see. Say, say, what's this? There's a note sticking out. A note? Now, it says, Dear Osgood Conklin, please forgive this oversight, but the warehouse is closed on Saturdays. If you'll return to Sherry's, you'll find your television set there, signed Wallace Bacon. Oh, for heaven's sake, we'll never get out to the country. Well, what do we do now? Drive back to the store? No, let's be different. Let's walk and carry the car on our shoulders. <laughs> Come on over to the television department, Miss Brooks. Maybe Stretch Snodgrass knows something about this. Maybe so. He must know something about something. Hello, Miss Brooks. Hi, Mr. Boynton. What do you know? Oh, not very much, I'm afraid. Me either. You're just modest. <laughs> <laughs> We're supposed to pick up a television set here that Mr. Conklin won this morning. Has the store manager mentioned it to you, Stretch? No, ma'am. I haven't seen the manager all morning. And I didn't receive no memo Miranda on it, neither. No what? Memo Miranda. But I'll go take a look in the stock room. Maybe it shut up there while I was out here. And if Memo Miranda didn't show up, maybe Carmen Miranda dropped in. <laughs> no, no, wait. We, we, we've got to get this thing straightened out, Miss Brooks. Stretch, you go into the stock room and see if they know anything about it in there. Yes, sir. I'll be back in a jaffy. <laughs> yes, Stretch, do hurry up. Hurry up. <laughs> look, Mr. Boynton, we can't keep Mr. Conklin waiting any longer. Why don't we just take one of these floor models to him? Between us, we could handle it easily. There's a freight elevator right over there. Oh, but, Miss Brooks, we have no authorization. Oh, it's bound to come through sooner or later. If Mr. Conklin doesn't get that set today, there'll be no living with him for the rest of the semester. Maybe you're right. I know I'm right. Now, let's see. Which one should we take? Well, they only have five models on display. Here's a nice one over here. Right. Let's roll it into the elevator. <laughs> Three speed queen washing machines. One, two, three. Five television sets. One, two, three, four. Four. That's funny. I haven't seen any customers in here in an hour. I'd better report this to the store manager right away. Although with a new man in the department, anything could happen. Probably just a mix up or something. Oh, Miss Brooks, I. Miss Brooks. Mr. Boynton. That's funny. They must have left. Gosh, Mr. Conklin will be burning up if he don't get that set he won. I know. I'll bring one of these floor models over to him. At least that'll keep Miss Brooks out of a jam. Go back and make sure, he says. <laughs> make sure I can count up to four is what he means. All right, Mr. Store Manager, here goes. Four television sets. One, two, three. Poof. <laughs> one, two, three. <laughs> Come along, Denton. We've got to get that set in a hurry. Uh, here's the television department. But, Mr. Conklin, maybe you ought to think this thing over. Take your time before... Thanks we... to Miss Brooks, I have very little time left. Where she's disappeared, you I'll never know. But, sir, maybe this whole thing is a mistake. You can't just take a television set off the floor of a store without asking somebody. Well, there's no one to ask. I was told to pick it up here, and that's just what I'm going to do. Here, if it'll make you feel any better, I'll sign this sales slip and leave it on the counter. Received of Sherry's department store... Television set. Sign, Osgood Conklin. How could somebody steal a television set, he says. Well, they didn't steal one, they stole two. Okay, so count the remaining three again, he says. Okay, so I'll count. One, two... Oh, come on! <laughs> Wait a minute. What's this? Received a Sherry's department store... 
television set signed Osgood Conklin. Now, that's something new. A crook who leaves a receipt. <laughs> Daddy was pretty angry when he made Walter drive him downtown to look for you, Miss Brooks. But now that you and Mr. Boynton have brought this television set, I'm sure everything will be all right. How long have they been gone, Harriet? About a half hour. They should be back any minute. Oh, maybe that's Mr. Conklin now. I'll get it. I've got some fast apologizing to do. Let's all go. Oh, hi, Miss Brooks. Look what I brung. The television set Mr. Conklin won. Oh, no. Jeepers. Good gravy. Watch your language. <laughs> it's on casters, see? Well, where'll I put it? Put it next to this other set. Mr. Conklin can use them for bookends. Miss <laughs> Brooks and Mr. Boynton brought the set that Daddy won. Well, you had no right to take that one from the store. Well, that'll be reported as stolen. Holy cow. I'm a fugitive. <laughs> Well, I'm as guilty as you are. Meet Connie Brooks, girl Dillinger. <laughs> well, this is serious, Miss Brooks. What are we going to do with these two sets? Let's turn them on. Maybe hop along Cassidy will ride one of them back to Sherry's. <laughs> uh, hold it steady, Denton. Steady. Yes, sir. There we are. Yeah, here we go. Yeah. There. there we are. Oh, hello, everybody. Well, I had to get it myself, but here's the television set I won. Oh, no. Jeepers. Good gravy. Watch your language. <laughs> Mr. Conklin, I'd like to tell you I'll that I'll talk to you later, Miss Brooks. Right now, I want to find a likely spot to string the aerial. Come out to the porch with me, Denton. But, Mr. Conklin, don't you think you better Oh, think... stop jabbering. On second thought, you'd better stay in here. You come with me, Boynton. Yes, sir. You too, Harriet. And we may need your long arms, Stretch. You can have them, Mr. Conklin. <laughs> We've got to hurry if we're going to hook this up in time to see Mr. Stone dedicate that library at the county jail. We're coming, Daddy. You don't know anything about this, Walter, but we're in a terrible jam. We've already brought two other television sets over from Sherry's, and Mr. Conklin's only entitled to one. I've got some depressing news for you, Miss Brooks. He's not entitled to any. What? That quiz program that called him up was just an April Fool joke. April Fool? But who would play such a monstrous joke? Shake hands with the head monster. <laughs> Walter, you didn't. Well, I only wanted to send Mr. Conklin on a wild goose chase. Now, I've got news for you, Walter. Shake hands with a wild goose. <laughs> well, thanks for the assistance, folks. Now, let's see where we'll place the set. Ah, this is a good spot right between these other two sets. I, uh, I may not be an interior decorator, but I do have an eye for symmetry. And when I see a nice balance... Between these other two sets? <laughs> Miss Brooks, what are these other two sets doing in my living room? They just came in to watch the television. <laughs> I tried to tell you, sir, that Miss Brooks and I brought one over before. And I brought one over right after that, Mr. Conklin, because I didn't know that they brought one over any more than you knew that they brought one over, or I brought you're, one you're over. Oh, so quiet! <laughs> Am I to understand that two of these television sets have been stolen? At least. <laughs> then what's the store going to do when they find out that I have taken a third one? Does that answer your question? Look, there's a police car stopping in front of the house. I just remembered. I gotta go home and mow the lawn. Stand where you are, You're in this as deep as we are. Deeper. <laughs> Don't move, anybody. Mr. Hurley. Well, if it isn't Miss Brooks, the little lady with the big bag. <laughs> now, Brooks, what's your story? My story? You heard me. Start singing. I must go where the wild goose goes. <laughs> what the wild goose knows. Just, 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 just a moment. <laughs> May I ask the meaning of this outrageous and illegal invasion of my privacy? Oh, you must be the brains of the mob. <laughs> this mob has, has no brains. <laughs> I mean, this is no mob. If you don't count television sets, there are very few of us here. These sets are all the evidence I need. 
And as this is your house, Mr. Conklin, you're the only one who'll have to come with me to the county jail. Uh, jail? jail? But you can't do that. M- M- Miss Brooks, do something. Say something. So long. <laughs> but I don't want to go down there alone. Mr. Boynton, Miss Brooks, you, you can't let me go alone. You, you've got to come with me to the county jail. Oh, that won't be necessary, Mr. Conklin. Not necessary? No, we can watch you on television in 15 minutes. <laughs> Arden, as our Miss Brooks returns in just a moment, but first... Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful luster cream girl. Tonight? Yes, tonight, show him how much lovelier your hair can look after a luster cream shampoo. Luster cream, world's finest shampoo. No other shampoo in the world gives you K. Dumit's magic blend of secret ingredients plus gentle lanolin. Better than a soap, better than a liquid. Luster Cream is a dainty cream shampoo. Leaves hair three ways lovelier. Fragrantly clean, free of loose dandruff, glistening with sheen. Soft, manageable. Even in hardest water, Luster Cream lathers instantly. No special rinse needed after a Luster Cream shampoo. So gentle, Luster Cream is wonderful even for children's hair. Tonight... Yes, tonight, try Luster Cream Shampoo. Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful Luster Cream girl. You owe your crowning glory to a Luster Cream Shampoo. And now, once again, here is our Miss Brooks. Well, Harriet Conklin corroborated her father's story that he'd been told he won a radio and a quiz contest. Mr. Hurley then took the three sets back to Sherry's and left a relieved but aggravated Mr. Conklin sitting in his living room. But if it wasn't Wallace Bacon on the phone, I was the victim of an outrageous hoax. It was only a little April Fool joke, Mr. Conklin. Oh, it was. But who played it on me, Miss Brooks? That I really can't say. You really can't, Miss Brooks? Of course not, Walter. We April Fools have to stick together. (laughs) Next week, tune in to another Our Miss Brooks show brought to you by Luster Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous, caressable hair and Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay. Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden, is produced by Larry Burns, written by Al Lewis, with Joe Quillen and Lester White and the music of Wilbur Hatch under the direction of Maurice Carlton. Mr. Boynton is played by Jeff Chandler, Mr. Conklin by Gail Gordon. Others in tonight's cast were Jane Morgan, Dick Crenna, Gloria McMillan, Leonard Smith, and Willard Waterman. Doctors prove palm olive soap can bring you a lovelier complexion in 14 days. Yes, 36 leading skin specialists proved in tests on 1,285 different women, that palm olive soap facials, using nothing but palm olive, brought new complexion beauty to two women out of three. Just wash your face three times daily with palm olive soap, each time for 60 seconds, massaging palm olive's beauty lather onto your skin. Then rinse. So start your palm olive facials today. Remember... Doctors prove palm olive soap can bring you a lovelier complexion in 14 days. Join the American Cancer Society's 1950 Cancer Crusade. 22 million Americans now living will die of cancer unless the present cancer death rate is reduced. Send your contribution now to the American Cancer Society, care of your local post office. Let's keep the fight going. For mystery liberally sprinkled with laughs, listen to Mr. and Mrs. North, the exciting, fun-packed adventures of an amateur detective and his beautiful wife. Tune in Tuesday evening over most of these same stations. And be with us again next week at this same time for another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks. Bob Lamont speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.